The big question is, can any excuse really justify the murder of an innocent life? And the big answer is absolutely not. Let's get into this video. Okay, so in this video, I'm doing a reaction video to Emmanuel Acho, which was pro-life versus pro-choice, Roe versus Wade being overturned, uncomfortable conversations, and he had four female panelists on this video. In this panel, there is four women, but three that I would like to highlight. The first that I would like to highlight was Pastor Chelsea Smith. The second that I would like to highlight is Sonia Richards Ross, four-time Olympic gold medalist. And the third that I would like to highlight is MJ Acosta. Ruiz TV analysis. But before we get into the video, let me break down the definition and share some scriptures. Okay, so the definition of abortion is the deliberate termination of a human pregnancy. Let's get into scripture. Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you, I knew you. Exodus 20.13, thou shalt not murder. The first hour I felt sorrow for the women who, who are now in a situation where they feel helpless and who don't know where to turn and who think that there is no option for them. And it shatters the deepest part of my soul for them. At the end of the day, what are we actually talking about here? You're talking about murder. You want the option to murder your child. And you want that endless option to keep murdering your child. And that's what makes you feel sorrowful. And again, MJ, you say that this is something that shatters the deepest part of your soul. Again, what shatters the deepest part of your soul? being able to murder your child over and over again as many times as you want and never taking responsibility for the actions that got you into that position in the first place. And you had to make one of the toughest decisions of your life. Can you take me to that moment? But from the age of nine, the one sole dream that always felt very real to me was becoming an Olympic champion. For me, in that moment, when I found out I was pregnant, right before I left for Beijing, um, but I also wanted to be an Olympic champion more than anything. Here's the thing. <laughs> like this is the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same reaction. It's the thing. It's the same thing. It's like I knew I wanted to be quote unquote. I knew I had this to do. I knew I had that. I had this. It's all about a self-centered, self-idolatry, self-worship situation. She wasn't even thinking about this is a possible baby in my tummy, and this life is worth everything more than anything that I could ever dream to accomplish and let's not even get on the fact that none of these women on the panel by the way ever talked about you know I really should have thought before I actually had sex right because the Bible is very clear God is is a protector and he protects his children and that's why in his in the Bible it says not to have sex before marriage why because of situations like this where a mother right I mean excuse me where a, a female is now soon to be a mother and she she's quote unquote not mentally ready because she didn't prepare herself for this and then now she's like oh Planned Parenthood the last 49 to 50 years of brainwash up oh, Planned Parenthood I have a way out I can still do my thing I can still do my dreams trust me I'm talking to myself first this is what I did right I had an abortion and as a woman who also identifies as a Christian woman uh, who tries to be Christ-like, I never ever thought that I would be in that situation. It was, it, it still is really hard for me to talk about it, but um, I am grateful, however, that I had the choice. So she is grateful that she had the choice. Do you see what I'm saying? And this is a woman who is a professing, professing Christian, a woman who calls herself a woman of God. I don't know what my life would have been like had I given up this dream that I had my whole life. I don't, I don't know if I would have been all of who I am today. And again, ladies and gentlemen, this this moment of, of her saying, okay, let's just be clear that Sonia specifically said three times ab ab about her dream, her lifelong dream since she was nine years old. The baby's voice is silent. The baby's voice is not able to say, hey, don't murder me. Like, I could be the biggest gift. And it also discredits so many women who actually listened to the quote-unquote radical pro-lifers and kept their baby. And to this day, they are so grateful that they kept their baby versus murdering their child. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm a person who follows the teachings of Jesus. And one of those teachings says that we weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. Mm -hmm. And in this moment, I feel completely humbled and do not know 
how to follow that teaching. It just seems impossible mm -hmm. to be able to do that in this moment. And I am wow. embarrassed by some of the rejoicing at the ex at the cost of somebody's pain. Wow, this really puts a damper in this whole video. Chelsea's response, because she is a representation of the body. She is a pastor and so is her husband. What are we weeping over though? Again, I sound like a broken record, but we're weeping over the fact that women cannot murder their children anymore. We're weeping over the fact that God finally put down, because he's the final judge, finally put down that 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 hammer and said absolutely not i will not stand by this i will not come into agreement with child sacrifice i will not come into agreement with the murdering of innocent lives many w babies who are in heaven now or if you want to call it fetuses or embryos whatever you want to call it those are all living creatures from the moment of conception the moment of fertilization and so that's what we're that's what you're embarrassed about what she also said she's embarrassed that people at the rejoicing of people's weeping or expense or however she said that really you're embarrassed i'm shook i'm shook at her response for real saving a life is a very valid cause mm -hmm. but that's not the only life that we're called to save if you're pro-life wow there's a lot of life mm. it's also taking one verse and making that as making that one verse Psalm 139 making that as black and white mm. as the verses of the forgiveness and love of Jesus Christ it's one verse versus thousands and thousands of verses that are in the Bible wow. and we have a conviction is when we look at the Bible is we put the emphasis where God puts the emphasis mm. and he puts the em emphasis on love mm. he puts the emphasis on forgiveness he puts the emphasis on compassion and so as a follower of Jesus, wouldn't I put the emphasis there? <sighs> this is just really disappointing. It honestly is. I mean, I kind of started off a little bit more spunkier than I just am now, but the Bible says our initial 10 commandments, the sixth commandment, it says thou shall not murder including all the other scriptures that I said, to prove that it's not just one scripture. There's multiple scriptures from the Old Testament to the New Testament. We are not to harm the innocent babies. If God gave you an open womb and gave you a fruitful womb, he did it intentionally. He didn't do that just to, you know, for you to abort that baby. You get what I'm saying? And so for her and saying what she is saying, and, and then you have the soft music coming in, the piano playing and all this stuff. And I'm like, listen, like you guys are not going to convince anybody who is really, truly has a relationship with Christ. I mean, really, truly, deeply has a relationship with Christ, not some surface Christianity. You cannot convince any single one of us that murder is going to be justified. And that was the whole question of this video. That's an innocent life that you're talking about and you have no respect for that innocent life. And that's the biggest problem. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. My final thoughts are that it sounds to me that this whole movement and this whole panel is so lacking. You wanna talk about the compassion, lacking the compassion for, for the innocent child. They're lacking the compassion for the, the silent voice. Where, where is that compassion? Why are we being so compassionate with women who have slept outside of marriage or, or maybe gotten pregnant in marriage, whatever the case is, are now choosing the abortion? Why are we, why are we, why are they, sorry, not me, but why are they siding with the women when they should be upholding the innocent life? Unfortunately, the pro-choice movement postulates that abortion is needed when that couldn't be further from the truth. And Planned Parenthood totally orchestrates the false ideology and the normalization of murder to all females around the world. How wild is that? Like it's super wild. And as facts are facts, Planned Parenthood is 1000% an unethical organization. They lack values, they lack morals, they lack the nature of God. And if a female condones to having sexual intercourse outside of marriage, 
then she must take full responsibility for her disheveled behavior. I mean, it just is what it is. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And you want to know God's stance in all this? God loves you and he gifted you through your sin to be able to have this baby. And God loves his children. As I was saying before, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, he clarifies to protect these babies, period, end of story. And so, because man has gotten so wicked and so blinded and so veiled with their own agendas and their own self-centeredness, he had to make a point and make it very clear where he stands. And where he stands is pro-life. And really quick before I go, I wanted to give a few resources for women who are terrified and who do not know what to do. And having the option for pro-life and knowing that there's organizations who love you and who wanna uplift you and wanna be there for a pre-care, during and after care and going through life with you who are gonna give you free diapers, they're gonna give you free medical ultrasounds, they're gonna give you free clothing for the baby, they're gonna give you so many different things that they, cause they, they support this movement and they want the babies to live. So let me go down this list, list really quick. Silentvoices.org, another one is Live Action, Embrace Grace and then Save the Storks. Go on these resources, I will leave the links below so you can go see these resources and call Call them and ask them for help because God wants you to keep the baby. God loves you and he loves the baby inside your womb. He wants nothing but love and protection for both of you. Do you understand? So please call or contact these organizations so that you make the right decision, the right choice, which is choosing your baby and not choosing yourself because I guarantee you, you will regret it for the rest of your life, for the most part. There's so many women around the world who regret their abortions. But the beautiful thing is that because of the forgiveness, because we have a loving father, because we have a compassionate father, he will restore you, he will redeem you. My intention is to save the babies and to keep you healthy as well, to keep both of you healthy and to keep both of you cheerful that knowing that when you become a mother, as one of my sisters of Christ said, you will never regret becoming a mother. You will love being a mother. So I'm rooting for you and I'm ecstatic for you to make the right choice. Okay, family, so that is it for me wherever you are in the world. For you to like this video, share this video, comment on this video, subscribe to my channel, even hit that bell notification if you never wanna miss a video from me. I drop two videos a week or more because the culture is out of control. Feel free to follow me on my social media, which is Instagram, I am Christina. I have a Facebook. You can click the link in my banner up there or there where um, I have all my social media that you could also follow me on. I also have a Twitter. I'm most active though on YouTube and Instagram. I will say that. So just FYI. Um, but I love you so much wherever you are in the world. Te amo. Have an incredible morning, afternoon, or night wherever you are in the world. And I will see you in the next video. God bless you.